Are you struggling with converting a Bouncy Castle X509 certificate to a valid X509 certificate too? You're not alone. This is a common issue many developers face, especially when dealing with ASN1 encoding. I understand how frustrating it can be when you encounter exceptions like index was out of range or unable to decode certificate. It can feel like you're hitting a brick wall, right? But don't worry, we're going to tackle this together. Here's the specific situation we're addressing. One user asked how to convert a PFX data stream to a valid ASN1 structure. They provided some code snippets and mentioned they were using Xamarin PCL with .NET Standard 1.3. Sound familiar? Let's dive into the details. The issue arises from the mono implementation of ASN1, which doesn't support undefined length encoding. This can lead to exceptions when trying to create an X509 certificate too from the raw data. Understanding this is crucial for finding a solution. Stay with me. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear solution to convert your PFX data stream without running into those pesky exceptions. To address the issue with the undefined length ASN1 encoding, the user should first utilize the PKC's 12 utilities class from Bouncy Castle. This class provides a method to convert the PKCS12 data to a definite length format. Next, the user should write the converted data back to a file. This step is crucial as it prepares the data for the X509 Certificate 2 constructor. After saving the data, the user can now attempt to create the XX509 Certificate 2 object using the newly saved file. This should resolve the previous exceptions related to undefined length encoding. If the user encounters a new exception stating that the, that the input data cannot be coded as a valid certificate, they should ensure that the data being passed is indeed valid and correctly formatted. Finally, if the user still faces issues, they can consider using the X509 certificate from Bouncy Castle directly, but note that this will not include the private key. Fun fact, the Bouncy Castle library is named after a fictional character from a comic book. It's amazing how creativity can lead to powerful tools in programming. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative solution involves addressing the undefined length ASN1 issue by utilizing the PKCS12 store builder with DER encoding enabled. The user suggests modifying the code to ensure the certificate password is correctly applied when creating the X509 certificate 2 object. Additionally, the user highlights the importance of using the correct password when importing the certificate, as using an empty string can lead to exceptions. Let's move forward and look at another answer. This user points out that the issue may stem from differences in how Mono's X509 Certificate 2 handles byte arrays compared to the .NET framework. They explain that Mono's implementation is less flexible and may not properly decode certain formats. They suggest that if you're using a PFX with an empty password, changing your code to include an empty string as the password when creating the X509 Certificate 2 instance could resolve the problem. Here's a pro tip. Always check the encoding type when working with certificates. This can save you a lot of headaches down the line. And there you have it. You've learned how to convert a Bouncy Castle X509 certificate to a valid X509 certificate too without running into exceptions. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more tips and tricks.